loses lock. Now he switches his display to night vision. Another task made very simple by the F-35's pilot-friendly interface. On the F-35, it's an 8 by 20 inch piece of glass. There are no switches in the cockpit. It's finger on the glass, touch screen, uh, very interactive in terms of being able to bring up a display, iconify a display, make it big, make it small, depending on what the typical mission is. The pilot spots a glowing burner bloom. A MiG-35. The Lightning pilot slaves his missiles to the HMD. The missile's seeker head will now work to obtain lock on anything the pilot looks at. Just a glance, and the enemy's fate is seen. But simultaneously, a SAM launch warning is projected onto the Lightning pilot's HMD. Again, he jams the missile and maneuvers against it. HMD allows him to track the missile on its intercept course. But then another warning breaks the pilot's concentration. A nearby MiG has managed to launch a heat-seeking Archer 11 missile. The Russian-built Archer 11 has been the standard heat-seeking missile for MiG fighters since 1985. Continued upgrades will make the Archer 11 a threat long into the future. These Archer 11 short-range missiles, which are supposed to be better than the AIM-9 Sidewinder, they don't get as confused by uh, flares as, for example, the Sidewinder on the F-22. The Lightning turns into the missile and deploys flares, but the Archer is equipped with an onboard computer that can distinguish infrared countermeasures from an aircraft engine. The F-35 is trapped, with a SAM in front and an Archer behind. To survive, he'll need the F-35's extreme maneuverability aided by its advanced fly-by-wire system. Fly-by-wire was something that was introduced on fourth-generation aircraft. The F-16 was the pioneer of that technology. It was fly-by-wire from the pilot's stick to the computer, and then it went through a conventional hydraulic system out to the flight control surfaces. But the F-35 goes one step further. The computer takes pilot inputs, then relays them to still more processors that control the flight surfaces individually. So it's very, very maneuverable, and it has to be but very, very benign in, in situations like landing on a carrier or landing in a stovall kind of configuration. As the SAM closes in, he rolls, punching chaff and flares. The Archer missile hesitates for a moment, then detonates, blasting shrapnel directly into the SAM's path. The lightning streaks north, now safe within the SAM-free corridor, he and his fellow pilots blasted away earlier in the night. He's informed that the rest of the MiG-35s have all been shot down, and the B-2s have successfully reached the target. The mission is accomplished, but the pilot's brief experience in an unstealthy F-35 is a stark reminder of just how vital the technology is. For an Air Force built on it, a scenario in which the stealth advantage is negated will quickly become a nightmare. April 8, 2027. In a hypothetical future combat scenario based on known diagnostics, a formation of eight French-built Rafales flies a patrol over the Pacific Ocean. A flight of four American F-22 Raptors accompany them. Even 20 years into the future, this remarkable aircraft is expected to remain the dominant air superiority fighter. 
I would say, based on all of the things I've read, and all the things I've heard, uh, we are at least a couple decades away from having to really face a significant or a viable fifth generation threat. When that technology finally catches up to where the United States is today, guess what? The Raptor is gonna evolve. The Raptor two decades from now that some kid's gonna be flying and I'm gonna be sitting at my desk is gonna be nothing like the Raptor that's flying right now. It, it is gonna, it will kick the snot out of the Raptor today. Although most of these upgrades are top secret, one is assured. By 2011, the US military expects to add a helmet-mounted display to the Raptor's arsenal of high technology. At 10.42 a.m. local time, the Raptors detect an ominous signal on long-range radar. A flight of 18 Su-30s, an aircraft not flown by any allied nation. The enemy formation appears on the Raptor pilot's HMD. The Americans monitor their progress, relaying instructions to the unstealthy Rafales. At a range of 25 miles, the Su-30s fire on the Rafales, a salvo of long-range radar-guided missiles. They streak towards their target, covering one mile every two seconds. The Raptors' rules of engagement prevent them from intervening. They are forced to watch from the sidelines as two Rafales are destroyed. The rest retreat, unable to stand and fight in the face of five to one odds. Just then, the Americans are cleared to engage the MiG-35s in a novel way. The lead Raptor data links the coordinates of one of the enemy fighters to a 767 with a circular turret on its nose. The nodule contains a high-energy solid-state laser capable of vaporizing an enemy aircraft from a range of 90 miles. The aircraft is a platform for whatever weapon you want to put on it. We started off with a gun, we went to some rockets, then we went to guided missiles. And if a beam type weapon, a directed energy weapon is the next step, then it's logical to expect that we'll put that on as well. It sounds like science fiction, but defense contractors are already at work on weaponized lasers. The concept dates back to the 1980s and the Reagan administration's strategic defense initiative, nicknamed Star Wars. These lasers were meant to target and destroy Soviet ICBMs. In recent years, this knowledge has been applied to the development of the airborne laser, or ABL. It's just a very large laser that's mounted in a Boeing 747 type aircraft and it has the system such that it can acquire a target, primarily a missile, but it could be a fighter, and then fire a very powerful uh, laser beam at that target and take it down. The ABL of today are bulky chemical oxygen iodine lasers designed as anti-ballistic missile weapons. Boeing and Northrop Grumman hope the first operational test of this ABL will occur in 2009. If successful, engineers will continue work on the ABL as well as other applications of high energy weapons. It is hoped these lasers can be mounted on multiple platforms, aircraft, ships, even tanks. Pretty soon, we are gonna have those weapons. And eventually, the first time they find out we're using them tactically is when they start disappearing off the screen and we haven't fired a shot as far as being a fighter jet. When such weapons reach the field, air combat will again be revolutionized. All a pilot will need is a coordinate. And with the press of a button, destruction at the speed of light. The Boeing, safely out of missile range 150 miles away, charges the laser and fires. The beam is in the infrared spectrum is not visible to the naked eye. One of the lead Su-30s is vaporized. 
The effect of the weapon is slow to sink in for the enemy formation. No one is quite sure what happened. A second coordinate is relayed to the 767. Again, the laser fires. Now, the Su-30s take evasive action, diving toward the Pacific to flee the lethal ray. With open war at hand, the Raptors secure permission to engage any hostile target. Then, the Raptors' missile alarm rings out. Despite their stealth, the F-22s are being actively tracked by several Mach 5 surface-to-air missiles.